What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Today, we've got another Mock Draft Monday and we're doing a super flex league. Ton of you guys wanted that. Um, hopefully this person picks on time, now that I'm thinking of it. But, um, good, okay. So, we are drafting now with subscribers. Um, I don't think the sleeper ADPs are perfect yet. I think they still have a little bit of a ways to go. But since we're using people, um, that should pretty much eliminate um, the bad rankings on here because you know the computer is going to draft by the rankings, but not the people. So this is our first Superflex mock. Um, if you don't play in a Superflex league, I mean, it's it's really not that big of a deal. We're still going to do a player analysis, but I know a lot of you do. So um, if you don't know, that's basically everything else is normal in the, the setup, except there's one extra flex spot and you're allowed to play a quarterback which basically means you have to play a quarterback every single time. I mean, you just you just have to play a quarterback in that spot. We're gonna take Michael Thomas here. Um, we only have 30 seconds, so I can't ramble on all of my uh, my picks like I usually do when I put like two minutes on the clock. Um, but like I was saying, people ask, what round do you wanna take a quarterback in in these leagues? And that's not something you can always answer because Every draft is different. You're going to be in super flex leagues where quarterbacks just fly off the board in the first two rounds, and you basically have to take one in round two or round three. And then you might be in some where, kind of like this one, like quarterbacks aren't really going yet. There's going to be a run for sure, uh, but you just need to adapt. You know, my general strategy is I kind of want one of that like top six, then I want another one in that like. It's not exact, but that kind of, well, we'll pull up quarterbacks here. You've got your normal top six that ends with Dak on this screen. Then you've got this Josh Allen through like Stafford kind of range. I would like one of those and then two just lower end. So we're not taking four of like the top 15, but I want to make sure that my second quarterback isn't Haskins, right? Like Haskins can be one of my quarterbacks, just not my second one. He can be like my fourth quarterback or something like that. So that's kind of my general strategy. And again, the rounds we take them in depends on what other people do. Uh, but really, no one's taking quarterback here. I do expect a run to happen very, very soon. Um, and since we did get Michael Thomas, we're probably not going to draft a wide receiver uh, for a while. Okay, so my pick is up again. No quarterback goes. And I expect if I take quarterback here, the run's going to start. Um, but here's my thinking. If the run happens here, I'm definitely not going to get the quarterback that I want at the next pick. The quarterback that I want is probably probably Dak, but it's close between Dak and Kyler. Um, I'm going to take Kyler and hope that... I'm going to... Yeah, I, I think Kyler is the right choice. I'm going to hope that running back isn't just a waste slam when it gets to my next pick. Um, I probably should have looked at running back. Maybe Nick Chubb could have been a good pick. But I really think uh, people are going to get scared at some point And just quarterbacks are going to start flying off the board. And I do, in these leagues, want to make sure that I get one of the quarterbacks um, in, the, in this top six. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but our next pick, we're definitely going to have to be taking a, uh, a running back. Let's try and guess. They have the line. They do have the line. Okay. So it kind of looks like at our next pick, we'll be between like Melvin Gordon, Carson. Okay. So still like a pretty normal, um, I guess, third round range for, for running backs, which kind of makes sense because if people start drafting these quarterbacks, um, not too many running backs should come off the board. Who would we want? Chubb's not going to be there. Jones won't be there. Fournette could be there. Um, I actually think the pick there would be Melvin Gordon, and that would be really nice if we can get him. Um, there's no one hidden, right? Jonathan Taylor's hidden still. So they need, they need to update the ADPs a little bit, but in general, I actually think these are a lot better than they used to be. So Taylor's the only one that uh, definitely needs... To be brought up a little bit. Maybe we can get him in the fourth round. So still no running backs. We get we get the run. 
like I just said would happen. As soon as people saw me take it, they're definitely uh, scared that they're going to go off the board. So we see Wilson, we see Prescott, and Watson all go in the second round. Um, and then Tyree Kill and Julio, and then now Godwin ends the first tier of wide receiver. So beginning of the third round, tier one of wide receiver is gone. Um, basically, the top tier of running back is gone uh, once Aaron Jones gets selected, which I expect to happen in like the next two picks. And then if we look at quarterback, the first tier of quarterback is gone. So I guess if you're in a 12-team super flex league, know that as soon as the third round begins, that is, or I guess early in the third round, that is basically when tier one is over, which is actually kind of nice that it works out that way, that basically everyone is going to get a t two tier one players, and you can kind of do what you want. You know, you've got uh, team 11 over here getting Adams and Hopkins, a really nice start. Uh, we've got Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. I went with wide receiver and quarterback, which I guess this will be really interesting to see uh, what my running backs end up being. If we can go um, with the quarterback we want, with the wide receiver we want, and then just try and load up on some running backs here, can we still get a core that we like? So we do get the running back that we wanted. Um, I actually didn't think he was going to take one because he already had Cook and Eckler. Um, that's a nice pick getting getting Kittle there. So we are going to take uh, we are going to take Melvin Gordon here. I do think you could you could have taken Leonard Fournette at that spot. Um, I think that if if and we're not going to know for a little bit, uh, Chris Thompson doesn't make the team, then we're going to need to move Fournette up in the rankings. As of right now, that's a possibility that he's going to steal a lot of the receptions. And while the touchdowns are going to go up for Fournette, uh, I think I like Melvin Gordon a little bit more. I might have to adjust the rankings and move Melvin Gordon up a little bit. But you have to think, if we're talking up all these different skill position players on Denver, and we think that Drew Locke at least has the potential to be really good, and they bring Melvin Gordon in to be the guy in the offense... It's pretty much going to make uh, Freeman's expendable, so he's, he's not going to be, be doing anything. And then Lindsey is probably going to be more of a third down back, uh, but th they're going to use Melvin Gordon, and Gordon's been pretty darn good whenever he's been used in an offense. So uh, I have seen a lot of very, very sharp people on Melvin Gordon, uh, and it just makes sense. If we think this offense, like we keep talking up like Fant, and uh, Sutton's going to be really good, and we talk up Judy, and Hamler's going to be a nice deep threat, and we think this offense is going to be solid. Why are we not targeting the pretty clear lead back in the offense? So I feel good about him as my one, especially because I do see a few names uh, at running back here that I'm comfortable with, so I know we are going to get another running back. I don't think I would want to just take Melvin Gordon and then go back to... Uh, like wide receiver, could take my extra quarterback here, but I think I'm cool waiting one more round. I don't think a huge run is going to happen. Um, and even if a, a relatively big run happens, I think there will be enough guys to where we can get a, a two that we feel good about. So I'm going to wait until the fifth round for that. Um, and we are going to take a running back here. Our option is between Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, James Conner, and Jonathan Taylor. Um, hmm. It's between David Johnson and Jonathan Taylor for me. I think... Oh, that's tough. I'm going to go David Johnson only because maybe people aren't looking down low and get Jonathan Taylor later. I think they're right next to each other in the rankings. Um, but it's the touches, right? And I talked about this Oh, I don't know which video. Some video last week. The, the thing with David Johnson is a lot of people think that he's dust. But realistically, I mean, how good is Carlos Hyde, right? And if they're going to give him as many touches as they gave him last season, and we know that David Johnson is still good in the receiving game, we have to think that David Johnson is going to get a boatload of carries, a decent amount of receptions, and... This is still a good offense. I know everyone wants to hate them because they got rid of Hopkins, which was very dumb. But guess who they got in that deal? David Johnson. And they're paying him a bunch of money, so they're going to use him. We know that Watson is an elite quarterback. 
and he he can elevate this offense into elite territory. So I want the lead back. Um, so I, I feel really good about our running backs now, Gordon and, and Johnson. Uh, given you know that we have uh, a quarterback we love and a wide receiver we love, like I wouldn't want Gordon and Johnson as my top guys and not have you know the best wide receiver in the game and one of the best fantasy quarterbacks. Uh, but since we have those two, I feel really good uh, about the touches. Like I don't feel confident that David Johnson is going to stay healthy or that Melvin Gordon is going to dominate. But I know that they're going to get touches every week, and that's what I'm targeting in these first few rounds. Guaranteeing touches. Um, the decision for me is going to come with this next pick. If Jonathan Taylor is still on the board at 508, do I take him, pretty much lock in a solid three at running back? Okay, well, it's not even a discussion point anymore. He went, but let's pretend that he didn't go. That would be an interesting decision because no one's really going for this next tier of quarterback, but a second run is about to begin because people are going to get scared. You need to start two quarterbacks every week in a league like this, and it's a mock draft, so people will be less scared than in a hometown league. Like if you're if you're doing a mock draft, this is actually a thought that I've had. A lot of people take more risk in a mock draft because they know it's a mock draft, right? Or they'll they'll be more willing to just abandon a position and be like, oh, well, I guess that didn't work. If you're in your hometown league, people are less willing to take risk because if you take risk and the quarterback position is gone, you just like lost for the year. You know, if you take risk in a mock draft, it's just a mock draft. So you're going to see these runs happen a lot more in an actual draft than they will in a mock draft. But it is still going to happen. So if we look at the quarterback position, we're basically about to finish like that second tier. And we're getting much more towards the players that people are definitely not comfortable with. And so the teams that are in a super flex league right now and don't even have a quarterback are going to be screwed soon. So we're, def we're definitely going to take a quarterback here because Jonathan Taylor was taken. And our only real option, I don't even know. You, you shouldn't even consider. I need to just make sure I get one. I have 10 seconds. Um, my next ranked quarterback is Stafford. I believe it's, it's either Stafford or Brady. Um, I keep flip-flopping them, uh, but I think it goes Stafford, Brady. I think Burrow is next, then maybe Baker, then Aaron Rodgers. That one, that one is not actually clear to me. Um, I don't actually remember. I think maybe it's Rodgers, then Baker. I'm not sure. Um, but also, what do you guys think about Brady and Stafford? I flip-flopped them like 15 times. Uh, who do you feel better about? Because I think this Detroit offense is going to be like really good. Like, I think it's a really, really good offense. It was a fantastic offense before Stafford got injured last season. And I don't know, man. I just I think they're going to be really good. I think there's a lot of points to be scored. Robert Woods, excellent pick at that spot. Um, sort of an excellent pick. So let's actually look at these two teams. Um, it's, it's actually possible they don't know it's even a super flex league, even though I announced it multiple times. Um, but we got just a fantastic core here. Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders, Chris Carson, and then Calvin Ridley and Robert Woods. I mean, that's three players I talked about in a video last week about just like the best early round picks. So maybe that's why they were going after those guys. And then of course I love... Uh, mix in, then Carson obviously has a bunch of touches for him. Um, but let's see where it turns out because you have to start. Oof, there goes Burrow. I was thinking about him with the next pick. You have to start two quarterbacks every week in this league. So, as much as his skill position player is going to be good, it's like, look at my skill position players right now. I mean, how much is an, of an edge is he going to have me at wide receiver? Because, I mean, he has Ridley and Woods, but I have Michael Thomas, and I'm probably going to get someone who's decent. You know, when you look at Mix and Sanders, Carson. He has an edge, but how much of an edge over Melvin Gordon and David Johnson, right? Uh, and my edge at quarterback is going to be quite significant. So he basically needs to go quarterback at this pick. I would think Aaron Rodgers would be his play because I know it just makes sense. Okay, he goes with Mark Andrews. All right. Oh, wow. Yeah, 
tight ends actually fell. So he, he's getting exceptional value at skill players. Um, but anyways, back to our team. I'd consider going Rodgers. I know I, uh, I'm down on him overall, but look at the rest of the options. I would prefer prefer if gone Burrow, but he's gone. I feel like maybe we take Rodgers and then we're, we don't need to worry at all about a run happening here at quarterback. And we can basically just ignore it for, for the rest of the draft. I don't know. I don't need any of those wide receivers. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. We'll take Rodgers. And um, I think we're going to be fine. I, I really do think that. Uh, if Because if I was taking a wide receiver, I probably would have taken either McLaurin or Chark are probably the two I would have taken. And I might be able to get them at the next pick because they have like Sutton, Diggs, T.Y., actually Metcalf. It would be that whole tier. Remember that tier I talk about that's like uh, Chark, Metcalf, McLaurin. You could probably throw Diggs into that tier as well. Keenan Allen. It's like all those players are so similar to me that I don't even care which one I get. Just give me one of them. Uh, and I don't necessarily need two of them because I have uh, Michael Thomas. So give me that third quarterback. I basically guaranteed that every single week I'm going to get two quarterbacks that I feel really good about. Um, and then we're going to wait until, I don't know, pretty late in the draft, um, probably unless the, like a big run happens or something. We're going to wait until pretty late in the draft uh, and just take – like a low-end guy, just just a low-end starter that we know is going to be a starter just in case an injury happens. Um, and because you want to take four quarterbacks in these ones um, for scarcity. So me taking a quarterback is making sure someone else in my league doesn't take a quarterback. I want four because if one, like say I took Big Ben last year. Well, he goes down. Now, if I only have three quarterbacks, now I only have two and there's not going to be any free agency, I'm in a pickle in a lot of weeks, especially if one of them gets hurt or if there's a bye. Um, I want to make sure I'm always starting two. So that's why I take four, but also creates scarcity. A team that, like uh, Team 10 here, doesn't have one yet, I have a significant leg up on them because if they're going into weeks starting like Cousins and Minshew, and I have Kyler and Matt Ryan, I mean, I probably have like a 15 point edge on them just right from the gates. And do we think their skill position players can make up the 15 points? You know, and that's that's if uh, he grabs, you know, two of these options. It might actually end up being that he has Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. And maybe I have a 20-point advantage going into that matchup. So uh, it's just about creating scarcity, just making sure that you're set at a position and a lot of other teams are weak at it. Nice. Good, 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 good. So... Uh, I was really hoping that the wide receiver would fall to us, and he did. We're going to get our boy Terry McLaurin. I really like how this team is starting out. So I haven't run through the team yet. Let's do that. Um, at quarterback and at super flex and one on the bench, we've got Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, and then Rodgers as the bench pick. Um, running back, we've got Melvin Gordon and David Johnson. And then a wide receiver, Michael Thomas and Terry McLaurin. Um, I have McLaurin much higher than a lot of people do. He is the clear number one on this offense. He is just the focal point of that offense. And although they're not going to be good, they weren't good last year. He was dealing with horrendous quarterback play. It did not matter. He was fantastic. His prop in Vegas, his over-under, I believe is 1,100 yards. Try and wrap your head around that. Like we usually look to Vegas to see what are the most intelligent betters thinking. And they're saying on average, he's probably going to have around 1,100 yards. That's a higher prop than a lot of really good players have. Um, and it, it makes sense. Like he was just incredible in his rookie season. And he offers a ton of weekly upside, which is also what we're looking for at this pick. I've already got a floor. Michael Thomas is going to get me my like 15 points at worst every single week, I want my two to have a ceiling. Because when my two goes off 
and I'm set at quarterback and I feel comfortable with my running backs, I win. So whenever Le- Weeks uh, McLaurin goes off, I win. And I want that uh, for my two under this setup. Maybe a different setup. I wouldn't want that if I took like, I don't know, who's like a volatile wide receiver. Let's see. Maybe maybe like Tyreek, even though he's not even that volatile if you look at the stats. Um, maybe A.J. Brown. If A.J. Brown was my one, I'd want a safer two because we know the uh, offense is going to be um, not as high volume. So he might have some weeks where he's a little bit lower. Um, but under this format, I definitely wanted uh, high upside weeks. So with the next pick, what position are we weak at? Probably running back. We want some upside at the running back position. Um, yeah, and it's going to go away soon. So we can take Geis. We can take Mac. Um, Damian Williams. Okay, Mac goes. We can take Geis. Um, is anyone hidden? It doesn't look like it. Okay, we should probably we should probably take Geis with that pick. It's not that I feel comfortable, and I just took two Washington players. Wonderful. Um, it's not that I feel comfortable with Geis. It's that I know his ceiling is running back one, and since I don't need to start him for very likely the first month of the season, I do have the ability to take him, just wait a little bit, see what's happening, and if I if he's really just not going to be that great, then I have the option to try and make a trade. I have the option to find time to find someone on free agency because that's you know that's likely to happen. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to underperform, uh, and someone will be available on free agency. Um, but I have time because I'm pretty confident that Melvin Gordon and David Johnson, at least for the first portion of the season, are going to be solid. They're going to get the touches. I don't need whatever running back I'm taking right now. Um, but since Geis is such a risky pick, I kind of need to take another one with this pick. Uh, so, and what's nice is, since I have these three quarterbacks, I can afford to not grab my fourth one just yet uh, and go back to running back. Um I'm thinking Zach Moss with the next pick. Because I, I don't want Karrion. I guess Damian would have upside. Brito would have upside uh, if he does win that job. Wow, that's incredible value on Parker the Slate. Um, Madison, if Dalvin Cook were to hold out. But I like Moss. Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard is probably a better value than Brita because, I mean, we don't know who's going to win that job, but we do know that Howard has been productive on some pretty bad, uh, I wouldn't say pretty bad offenses, actually. I mean, the Bears weren't Bears weren't that great uh, when he was productive for them, uh, but on different offenses, he's he's been productive. But it's mostly these upside guys. Definitely Boston Scott. We, we should really be targeting him. Um, you guys know how good Boston Scott was even when Miles Sanders was healthy last season? I mean, he was... Can I actually pull up stats from last year? I don't even... Oh, cool, I can. Let's see. I wish that they made this hold. So rushing... All right, so we can look at like PPR points. Um, PPR points to end the season... 25, 13 and a half, 8, and 36. And the 36 was with um, an injured Miles Sanders. But the point remains, he has he has a ceiling. He, he had a lot of receptions when, uh, when he was still healthy. But I don't feel great about which running back I'm taking here. So oh, I think I'm going to go Zach Moss. But maybe, mm, I'm going to go Zach Moss because I have four seconds. I would have probably had to put a lot more thought into that pick. Uh, but I honestly think I honestly think Moss is he's going to be good because we've already confirmed that he's getting the goal line work. We have uh, pretty much, I wouldn't say we've confirmed that he's going to get third down work, but you have to think that 
with how bad Singletary was last year and how good Moss is in the receiving game, um, and the fact that they've already come out and said that Frank Gore, um, that role that Frank Gore had last season is Moss's. They've just basically said that um, he's going to get early down, he's going to get some goal line. With how good he is, like I said, in the receiving game, he's going to have some third down. So I just think he's like a better version of Singletary. And so give me that. Give me that late in drafts. Um, because again, I'm good with my first two running backs. I just want upside here. We should probably look at wide receiver. Um, I do think that, well, Debo is probably auto-picked. Although the guy's here, so I don't know what he's doing. Um, Michael Gallup. Well, I guess I guess that's actually a fine range for, for Debo at this point. My, my take on Debo is that he's probably not going to be fully healthy to begin the season. That's kind of where his timetable is. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not a bad pick there. He's just he's a very big risk. Um, but at wide receiver, we probably don't have that many options. We don't. Um, but Anthony Miller stands out. Deontay Johnson stands out. Um, we're going to go with Miller first and hope that Johnson's there after. And I do, I do have Miller ranked ahead. Um, I could have taken Edelman at that pick. But Edelman really has no upside, and I kind of need someone with a little bit of upside at this pick. And Miller, Miller was phenomenal down the stretch last season, and um, we have to think their offense at worst is going to get a little bit better. Like there is, there is no way they could get any worse. And given how good he was when he was finally healthy, finally getting the snaps last season. It, in the middle of the 10th round, I think that is exceptional value. So I, I do think his ADP is going to rise probably into like the 8th round is what I would think. Once, uh, maybe not a super flex league, but once these uh, once these leagues really start happening and people realize that there are vacated targets on the Browns and that they're probably going to be a little bit better, uh, they're going to look at Miller and be like, oh, he's, he's actually a great, great value. Um, so let's run through the team. We've got at quarterback, Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers. Running back, we've got Melvin Gordon, David Johnson, Darius Geis, and Zach Moss. And then wide receiver, Michael Thomas, Terry McLaurin, and Anthony Miller. Um, we're pretty much even at running back and wide receiver as far as my confidence level, given that we have The Rock and, and Michael Thomas, and we're only going to be starting two wide receivers every week. Um, so we don't really we don't really need many more receivers. Maybe maybe two. Maybe two. I don't know. That's a question, actually, if you want one or two more. Um, quarterback is basically gone. So with this pick, uh, it would only really be backups. Um, are there any? Hmm. It's technically only backups, but also Fitz is going to start the season. We don't know. Uh, when they're going to make the switch. But Fitz will start the year. Tyra Taylor is probably going to start the year. Um, we don't even know if Trubisky is going to be the quarterback or not. Um, so I guess the question is, do we grab... We probably don't grab Fitz, right? Because if we're taking a quarterback here, we're not taking one that we think we're going to start in week one. So that would be what you do if you needed fits. So we're not going to take fits. Um, at wide receiver, we could take Kirk, Marvin Jones, John Brown. Um, or we can go to running back and take probably Damian Williams. Let's, let's take Damian Williams. Again, another player, we're just going for upside. I know I love Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, but remember, only upside at this pick. And Damian Williams is, you know, probably the best handcuff in the entire league. And he still is going to have a role even uh, if Clyde is the lead back. But we're only taking handcuffs at this spot. And which handcuff has the most upside? Probably Damian Williams. Um, I don't love it. But the only other options are Tony Pollard, Darren Evans, Chase Edmonds, um, Joshua Kelly. 
We could take Duke Johnson to back up David Johnson, but no one's ever given Duke Johnson a full role, so I'm not even confident that the job would be his um, if he uh, if there was something that happened to David Johnson. I think with our next pick, we are going to take Boston Scott. Um, can you like add people to cues? I don't even remember how to do that. Oh, good, we can't. All right, um, we are going to take Boston Scott there probably. Um, and actually, we'll look over at quarterback as well. But there's there's so many. Like we've still got Fant, Goddard, Gasecki, Jonu Smith, Ian Thomas, uh, Jarwin. I really don't care which one of those I get. Um, and I do actually want to lock in Boston Scott here. So we'll take um, we'll take one of those maybe in the 13th round, uh, and then we'll swing back over to wide receiver after that. We did end up getting Boston Scott with our last pick, and then I went through and I just grabbed a bunch of wide receivers that I would feel good about getting, and a million of them are still left. We're going to take Jamison Crowder with this pick. Um, definitely not a high upside pick, but... Given that we're in the 13th round, he's only our fourth receiver, um, and I have captured upside with McLaurin and with Anthony Miller, I figured why not grab a guy who was like 16th in the uh, NFL, I believe for wide receivers, in targets last season on a team that had a pretty darn bad offense, Uh, so it's probably going to be a little bit better on offense, Um, and I expect that offense to be better, I expect the additions of Perriman and Mims on the outside to draw defenders a little bit away from Crowder and just to sustain drives a little bit more. So I think the offense overall improving is a benefit to Crowder, and Crowder is still very, very likely to be the top target in the offense. And so if there are a few weeks this season where I need to start Crowder, I am absolutely confident with that. Pairing him even with Michael Thomas a few weeks I'm going to have an incredibly high floor at the wide receiver position. So I really do like the decision grabbing him. Um, I think we can take another receiver because I was looking through running back. And, I mean, we're pretty solid there. Gordon, David Johnson, Geis, Moss, Damian, and Scott. I'm very likely to find two guys each week that I can I can put in there. Um, and my options... Mm, Okay, so how many picks do we have left? We have three picks. So we're only allowed one flex, uh, one defense, and one tight end. I kind of want... Hmm. What do you guys think? Which which would be the best pick for our team? Because I really do want a, a little bit more upside with Tony Pollard or Chase Edmonds. Uh, do I need... I would basically be taking Deshaun Jackson with this pick. Uh, for some weekly upside potential and potentially the number one uh, receiver there. Or do I go with the running back? Um, I think I'm going to wait one more on tight end. Um, Yeah, let's grab... Let's grab Pollard. I want one more upside there. Uh, Given that running back wins leagues, uh, I want my bench just full of potential upside at running back. So Moss could absolutely be the starter. Damien could be the starter if something happened to Clyde. Boston Scott is fully capable of featured role if Miles Sanders went down. And I genuinely believe uh, he's going to be a very sneaky option, even with Sanders healthy, because they're going to use him in the receiving game a lot. And then Tony Pollard is like a top five running back if Zeke goes down. So we're just capturing all these different potentials. Not all of them are going to hit. Most of them probably won't hit. But if one of them hits, we're good. Uh, so I, liked, I I think that was the correct decision. I don't really think there's going to be a run on tight end. Everyone over here already has one, so they would be taking a second one. And while that's definitely possible, um, I don't think all of them are going to do that. And you would basically need all of them to do that because I don't really care which one I get of Goddard, Jonu Smith, Ian Thomas, and Blake Jarwin. So as long as I get one of those, I am cool. So the draft is basically done at this point. Uh, We ended up getting Dallas Goddard in the late 15th, and then we took the Broncos in the 16th round. I think the Broncos are actually a really nice defense option this year. But 
We will run through the team one more time, and then let me go know who you guys think uh, the best team was. I was looking through. There are some pretty solid teams, uh, some teams that definitely abandoned the quarterback position a little bit too early. You really don't want to leave a draft with only two, um, and you definitely don't want one of those two to be a backup. We'll, we'll say that. Um, but run through the team. So a starting lineup would be... Uh, Kyla Murray in, in the quarterback position at wide receiver, Michael Thomas and Terry McLaurin. Running back, Melvin Gordon and David Johnson. Uh, super flex would be Matthew Stafford with the backup of Aaron Rodgers. In the flex spot would probably end up putting Anthony Miller. Uh, and then the bench would be uh, a ton of upside running backs. Geis, Moss, Damian Williams, Boston Scott, and Tony Pollard with the backup wide receiver, of Jameson Crowder and then Goddard at tight end and the Broncos defense. So let me know who you guys think had the best team. Let me know um, where you think maybe I went wrong. Should I have waited at this Rodgers pick? I personally don't think so. I mean, just two rounds later, you're at very, very low end options. So I think grabbing Rodgers there and still ending up with McLaurin, who is the, the wide receiver I would have taken in the sixth round anyways, um, was definitely a smart pick, uh, and I would have preferred to leave the draft with four quarterbacks, but since all of these quarterbacks are ones I feel are definitely going to produce, um, maybe Rodgers doesn't produce like a high-end quarterback, but I mean, he came off the board as like the quarterback, what, between 15 and 20, something crazy like that. Um, at that point, yeah, you're, you're taking Aaron Rodgers, uh, cause you know, the floor is there, um. So let me know all those things. That's the end of this one. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting the like button? How about subscribing to the channel if you're new? Thanks for watching.